Welcome to this special Hornbill TV explainer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Angeli. Today we'll be discussing some of the major implications of one, the growing number of Naga nationalist organizations and their impact on the livelihood of private citizens in Nagaland, especially entrepreneurs. Two, the definitions of taxation in this regard in both legal and illegal terms. The context for this explainer was yesterday's exclusive report by our channel quoting the opinion of a leader of the NSNK Ang May faction, Kampe Konyak, who clearly said that the growing number of Naga nationalist organizations is a good thing and that it was not something serious enough for anyone in Nagaland to have a headache about. That's practically what he said, uh, because he gave the statements in Nagamis. Uh, our channel felt it quite proper to telecast what he said in this regard before we take this explainer and conversation forward. This was his statement. Aru <laughs> ekta Manu public can give Hulibi ekta bishi effect crazy. Aru to do recently June la moina de Hulibi KYAB. Aru ek barbi aru split huigena ang my aru laisha. Aru in fact Nagal and Ekla de Hulibi we are seeing around 19 factions. To itu abnigan faction can do in a bishi alak alak ulaija dikipase. Aru to be public can give Hulibi itu ekta concerning wa public can be to garnibi concern wa be dikipase. So, it is a proper reason to apni as a former itu ina naga manu la surf Korea hiya huli bi apni as a former NSN ke laga leader apni itu pori ki ko bo yare split kan bishi hua dikya faction alag alag ula dikya ba dikya do reason do ki ho nishna se itu bari da makan matha kura ule ko kam thakya nai itu ki man faction ula se man phala se India he NDP ni napa gete itu British colonial thakya te amde do some 70 80 faction ola ase government of india bi etu bisete ta kan bi sovereignty pa ase aji ami kan laga faction ki man ulai ase etu 1952 bra ami kan naga movement start kura ase 1975 bra ami kan laga accord hoise 1976 bra pakistan china laga mission shuru kura ase 1980 bra nsc to form hoase 1988 bra faction hoase 88 pra 88 perfection hua ase 2011 te hoise 15 te hoise 18 te hoise 19 te hoise itu tu hoile ami kan naga majore itu tu hoile so interesting itu tu bisi bhal kotha ase itu tu ami kan bachcha bisi paise naga tu bisi khushi kotha ase itu tu eku mon dukla kotha nai government of india bra ami kan lore pakla kori dia ase ami kan lore divide and rule policy khele ase ha itu tu tai kan ki kori ase holle bi naga ke eku effect nai that was our reporter, Akre, a very smart lady and a very smart reporter that she has always been worried about extortion and taxations in Nagaland. So I believe that she could connect to the NSN leader in this regard when she was putting her questions forward. Now, the second worry that our reporter connected to in regard to the growing number of Naga nationalist groups in Nagaland was the problem of taxes. The more the factions, the more the tax burden on the people with particular emphasis on our entrepreneurs, especially new and young Nagas who want or are starting a new business venture. So mind you, there are reports of local businesses by young entrepreneurs shutting down because of the burden of taxation, which is much more than their income or the investment in their businesses. So let's check out what the NSN leader said before again we give a context to this explainer we will take this forward in a little while after examining what the NSN leader said le montaga faction bishi ulado bhala sinya ko ase holi mohan recently cncci laga press conference attend kura homoi tan multiple taxation garne dukpa especially mohan naga manu entrepreneurs kan ulao le montaga Youth can give you encourage kure itu entrepreneurship bi choose kui wena holi ko tha do mohan yare especially yare business la hapte holi bi mohan dikhya do multiple taxation do public ke bishi dikdar diye se aru dukan ekta de holi bi faction ki man ase ta de la holi bi 
bishi faction kan will be multiple taxation law ko in cncci kan par bi kwa arutando itu digdar pala bi janai dise to apni itu law pore ki ko itu ile gata dise meram itu taxation the government of india it is not taxation government of india bra me kan ki extortion ko itu taxation de itu tax no hoy ni na haklen tu hole for Christ, like a lane, as you already promised, could say, just the offering the Anisa dia lagai takise. Naga mati the text nidivo kule, India de sabi moita daily brise, duimuna tin mona buhina, moi India de state moina najaja gat hakenai, two thousand eleven twelve, moi baba moi valo de vitakina, I say, it to them the manu can jaga the GST kiman loy, it am more ten bin fifty sixty thousand peg, which GST ekla fifty thousand pot of lace, Naglen de to ekta kabita kenai. Huh? Naglen do serve Nichu laga jaga se Nichu ki guru manje Nichu laga jaga se. Iti ame kan hang guru le thaki le ame kan hang no guru bo kile ame kan to Supreme Court nae ame kan laga Nichu khud Nichu laga jaga se. Ame kan government of India laga answer de no hoy na gatu na. Itu karne ame kan taxation lawa bi kidnapping no guru lage torture no guru lage public praki manju ase itu di bolage aro di ke na ki ahi se itu di bolage potha tu aro phal bra public public thaga bra thaga ase public lora ekdom khushi pai ke na. Kiniga Naga to a Gere Rojabo, Kiniga Amakalaga sovereignty to Hosalaga Jaga to Punchibo, huh? Aro Amakan to Kiniga comfortable the Naga to Takibolage, free land Kiniga Hobona, it to is up to Milayana, Naga civil society, Naga public lord in Naga Kurubolage, Kiman faction Takilebi. So that was the NSCN leader and his statements and I believe now that you have got an idea of the context that we will be using to explain the difference between extortion and taxation and of course ladies and gentlemen we'll be talking a little bit about some of the problems that our local entrepreneurs especially the uh, young Nagas who are only now venturing into business activities which unfortunately are, turn, are turning out to be a problem for them because their investment seem to be much more than just the income that they have been rece receiving for example monthly so now you have heard the NSCN leader will talk a little bit about some of the definitions of tax and how it is different from extortion but before that we'd like to point out two things here in regard to what the NSCN leader said first thing he said something in the nature of the growing number of Naga nationalist organizations in Nagaland first thing should not be a worry for anyone that was one of his first statements and the second point he mentioned was about uh, the taxation culture in Nagaland and how when our reporter asked him about whether the number of Naga nationalist organizations imposing taxes on Naga entrepreneurs is a problem he says something in this nature of uh, contribution that the people are giving to the groups and it is not tax it is not something that is imposed on, on them but it is more of charity free will contribution that is given by the people uh, for the nationalist service that the groups are giving so those are the two, two things that we will keep in mind as we discuss these points further on so what is the definition of tax you must be aware by now that taxation is a constitutional tool a levy that is imposed by a constitutional authority a tax is a compulsory uh, contribution to the state's revenue which is levied by the government on or from workers and private individuals and businesses or from which it adds to the infrastructure that is built in the state for these taxpayers it is also a charge that is added to the cost of some goods services and transactions for example if the government of Nagaland imposes water tax on you it means that whatever tax that you pay to the government will be used only for development of say roads or building new hospitals or creating infrastructure to supply more water to the let's say villages so the tax that you pay is in exchange for service ladies and gentlemen that is something 
we most of us we are aware of a tax is a compulsory financial charge or a type of levy that is imposed on a taxpayer which is the citizen people like you people like me so we are individuals or legal entities or we are non-governmental non-profit organizations we are the taxpayers so we collectively pay to the government for its services so the money that we pay to the government as tax is used by the government to spend on our welfare on our infrastructure for example we have roads and bridges we have uh, infrastructure development such as hospitals schools government schools so these are some of the areas that the government uses the tax that you pay to the government to build for you taxes is also a way to regulate and reduce negative external factors in the business establishment so again the taxes are used for various purposes by the government which includes funding for spending without inflation and taxes are for funding public infrastructure buildings roads and bridges water supply electricity and for general developmental purposes besides welfare projects that's why you pay taxes to the government in return the government gives you all the necessary facilities welfare projects developmental programs to be they are built for you in return for the taxes that you pay so now uh, in the context of Nagaland let's talk about uh, the difference between taxes and extortion simply put extortion is the practice of obtaining some kind of a benefit uh, normally monetary benefit money through force it is not willingly given it is not imposed on you like the government imposes taxes on you it is always forced extortion is always forced in one way or the other so uh, my colleagues and we used to talk about how uh, some Naga nationalists organization members used to come to our house with a pistol tucked in their trousers and saying morombra takes divina their language is very polite it's like morombra please kindly but you can see the gun there openly tucked into their trousers so that is of course another kind of force that they use to gain some kind of a benefit out of you in most jurisdictions in India it is most likely to constitute a criminal offense extortion is a criminal offense uh, what we have here in Nagaland is that uh, taxation in both its legal and illegal definition is that it's so normalized that we no longer define what is legal tax and what is illegal tax because everywhere you go there is a tax you have community organizations student organizations transport and drivers and owners associations you have even community organizations such as tribal hohos and village councils who levy taxes on you that are not i believe always uh, validated by the government authorities and of course we have taxation that is levied on business and local entrepreneurs by the Naga nationalist organizations so those are two different things here so who can levy these taxes who can impose these taxes on you uh, according to the legal services of India only the government and its establishment only constitutionally empowered authorities have the right to impose and collect taxes in the country in the state in the region no other establishment other than the constitutional government in india at least has this authority the tax collected by the government is used for common benefit of all citizens we have talked about this a little bit earlier so uh, contextualizing the burden of private citizens including government employees private government corporate em employees public service employees individual entrepreneurs and businessmen in Nagaland so how does this how does this whole taxation and extortion play out uh, in regard to the many organizations in the state who are 
imposing taxes on the people. So um, how many Naga nationalist groups are there, for instance, for now? There are about 18, I think about 19. There is a confusion about this because it seems like every other day we have new groups coming up. Uh, some groups breaking away from their parent organizations and floating their own organizations. But these are some of the major Naga nationalist groups who are active in Nagaland and Northeast region. The NSCN IM is one, the NSCN Kaplang is another. These two are considered the parent, uh, two of the former Naga nationalist organizations in Nagaland. There is also the NSCN Kitovi Nupak, NSCN um, NK. There is also the NSCN reformation. There is also the NSCN Kangwo Konyak. And we have four factions of the Naga National Council. We have the federal government of Nagaland. We have the NNC parent body. Yeah, that is the name of this particular group, the NNC parent body. We have also the NNC non equities faction of again the NNC or the Naga People's Government of Nagaland. And I don't know how many of you have heard about this particular group and this is new to most of us. There is also a group called the Government Democratic Republic of Nagaland or the NNC NAGDRN. That's a that's that's mouthful. That's a lot of them. And then there is another NAC and Akota Chopi. We have the Ang Mai faction and others, a lot of them. Sometimes even in the media here, we journalists, we lose track of the number of groups that we have now. So now, taxation and taxation then and taxation now. In the early days of the Naga nationalist movement, people used to give contributions willingly out of free will, there was no tax impos imposed on them, like we talked about this earlier. Whenever the Naga nationalist groups used to emerge from the jungles and they will pass through villages and towns, villagers used to provide them with food and water and rations. It used to be a practice of hospitality that we are characterized by, we are defined by. It was in our nature. Unfortunately, during the 80s, somehow this charity and goodwill contribution turned into tax. Now everyone was uh, compulsorily required to pay taxes to this group in one form or the other. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, the GB of our area in Woka used to come every year to collect what was called taxes, uh, house taxes, and pig taxes, chicken taxes. And we used to wonder those days, we build this house ourselves by our hard earned money. We bought this land with the money we earn. Why are we paying taxes? So those were the thoughts that used to go through us when we were growing up. Now, it is different now. We are paid to pay a lot of taxes to the, to the government establishments. The community, uh, private organizations are also guilty of illegal taxation demanding something that they do not deserve or are entitled to. And then we have the Naga nationalist organizations also imposing taxes one way or the other, house taxes, business taxes, yearly taxes, goods and services taxes. It's mind boggling. So we have about 18 to 17 Naga nationalist organizations. And let's add some student organizations and the public tribal organizations into the whole mixture. Let's make a small calculation. Let's say you are a local entrepreneur or a salaried person working in a private company who earns about 10,000 rupees a month, and which is a median in Nagaland. The median salary in Nagaland is 7,000 to 15,000 max at the median. So let's do a small calculation. If 18 Naga nationalist organizations, let's say charge, 15,000 per month for a certain tax for a business that you might be running or the house that you have you have or a business establishment you might be running if they charge you 15,000 15 Naga nationalist organizations I'm taking a very conservative number here 15 groups coming to you each of them charging 15,000 from you how much do you pay in a month 
almost 3 lakh a month. But most businesses in Nagaland, according to the media's estimate, barely makes that much in a year. Small, small, small businesses. So how can we survive? How can the private individual, how can even the salaried individual, especially those working in private companies, survive when all these groups come over to you asking for tax? And you have individual taxes to the tribal communities, village council memberships, you have student organizations membership. It's mind boggling. How can we survive? And in fact, this is the reason why during the early 2000 years, the Nagaland Legislative Assembly was full of debates about how they were going to address this issue. Let's have a look at uh, the numbers in Nagaland, especially when it comes to extortion and illegal taxation. Nagaland recorded the highest rate of crime under what uh, the police has categorized as extortion and blackmailing. And in 2021, the number was about 7.6%, 7.6% against the national average of, not this, not this, keep this in mind. Nagaland's percentage in the category of extortion and blackmailing was 7.6% against the national average of 0.8%. The na national average is not even 1.0%. But Naglen is more than 7. So Naglen registered about 159 crimes that were categorized as extortion and blackmailing in 2021 alone. So you can imagine the severity of this problem in Nagaland. The Nagaland government also ordered in 2022 that all police check gates except those at the interstate boundaries would be shut to curb what they call illegal collection of money from the vehicles on the roads. What they didn't say was that it was actually the community organizations and the Naga nationalist organizations who were most active in the collection of illegal taxes. Uh, if you remember the Home Department of Nagaland in 20, uh, no, in 2009 also issued an order, order banning all check gates and any kind of taxes and illegal collections along the highway to, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but during 2009, the then Home Minister of Nagaland, Im Kong L. Im Chen, he is currently sitting MLA in the Nagaland Legislative Assembly, called any other taxes in Nagaland, apart from the one imposed by the government of Nagaland, as extortion. And I think there is a clarity in this regard as our citizens become more and more educated. The district legal services are engaging in uh, promotional programs promoting the idea and the knowledge of taxation, legal taxes and illegal taxation, the liabilities, the economic liabilities of the citizens and the private individuals. So uh, our students are reading more, they are more attuned to what is happening outside. They know laws and the lawmakers, they know the processes of the society and the frameworks that frameworks that connect each and every establishment in the society, whether it's social, cultural or economic. So they are more aware. Slowly and slowly, I believe that our students will rise up. Our youth will also will rise up to understand, to know the various economic liabilities that they have to endure and bear as, as they grow up. And among this, um, we, with all this taxation and non-taxes, legal and illegal taxes issue going on, I think it is difficult for us to understand why we still are not addressing this issue at both the community leadership levels and at the government led, uh, at the government policy level ladies and gentlemen i think it is an honest that we all have to carry it's not just the government's work that has to do it is not only the naga nationalist organizations that need to sit down and seriously think for the people in regard to the financial burden that is imposed on 
private individuals, especially our local and young Naga entrepreneurs in this regard. And the community leadership in Nagaland also have the duty to sit together with the government and with the nationalist organizations to address this matter because it is one thing to have a support system for local entrepreneurs, giving them lip service, saying that Naga youths need to venture into businesses and establish their own livelihood ventures. The government is supporting them, the community is supporting them, but it is quite another thing to actually support them in a way that is not a burden to them. We can support them by encouraging a conversation in the community, forcing legislations in the legislature, for instance, at a policy level to come up with laws that will protect their business interests also. Local entrepreneurs in this context are the ones who create the local economy, ladies and gentlemen, while migrant entrepreneurs who are not native to a particular community or state create wealth only to invest and channel it outside. This is a market truth. Only local entrepreneurs can build a local economy, while uh, migrant entrepreneurs can only invest to create wealth that only circulates outside. So I believe that if you really, really want to uh, encourage our local entrepreneurs. I think we can all be a voice uh, at both the government level, at both the community level, and even engage with our nationalist organizations to address this issue effectively if Nagaland wants to move forward economically too. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV, ladies and gentlemen. We will be bringing you more news updates and, of course, a lot of explainers, and we are going to have conversations in this regard. If you have got any comments or any feelings about some of the issues that the state of Nagaland and its people are facing, and if you're on social media, why don't you let us know your perspectives and your thoughts in this regard. I'm Alan Lee. See you next time.